So there's been a slight change in plan. We originally expected our plasterer to be coming in about three weeks. And as a result, you know, we've been taking our time with the lounge. We've been having days off, seeing some friends, dialing it back. But uh, he reached out to us a couple of days ago and basically explained that because another one of his jobs has been delayed, he can either start this Tuesday or basically not at all, like in a month or two's time. So naturally, we don't want to wait a month or two. We want him to come on Tuesday, but we have a lot of stuff that we need to do before that. Tuesday is also three days away. So we've written a to-do list. It's a very ambitious to-do list, but we'll see how far we get. Now we've got this bit of plasterboard for the cupboard under the stairs, but before we can dot and dab it, we need to PVA the wall to help it stick and also maybe seal the wall. I'm not sure what it's for, but I'm gonna do that now. Our next thing we're tackling is this giant hole in the ceiling. If you watched our earlier episodes, you might remember we went away for a week and um, our ceiling had collapsed. It's basically because we had removed the chimney breast, but there was a big slab of concrete underneath that was originally supporting it. We knew it had to come down and we did eventually have to take it down or the bits that hadn't already fallen down. But um, yeah. It came down of its own accord a little bit back in the summer. So Tom's just chopped the plasterboard to size and uh, now we have a very interesting and neck hurting task of screwing plasterboard into a ceiling. We just need to patch up this bit under the stairs. As you can see, Tom has already done one side, and although it doesn't need to be fireproof plasterboard, we only have pink stuff left. So fireproof is better for stairs anyway. Fireproof is better for stairs anyway, so <laughs> we're just chopping it out from here, and then another thing can be ticked off. Basically how we cut plasterboard is we'll measure everything about the area that we need to cut. So for example, you can see a section comes jotting out there and there's another plank of wood up there. And then we kind of mimic what that looks like on another piece of plasterboard, measure it out on the thing we want to cut and then we cut. Next up on the to-do list is we are going to be shooting the wall. Um, this is to prevent rising damp. And this is where it's, there's probably gonna be a lot of debate here. Um, does it work, does it not? We just thought, why not just shoot it? And if it helps prevent damp, then yeah, so be it. We've done everything else to prevent it by cleaning the sleigh, putting a new damp proof course. We just thought, let's just be extra cautious, shoot the wall um, and use a waterproof render when we're um, plastering. We're using this, it is called um, Seeker. Just you can get it from Tool Station, 15 pound a pot. And we'll probably use about three or four on just the wall where it's damp, and that's where the old chimney was. It still even feels a little bit damp now uh, from where the chimney was. So we just thought, let's be safe. Um, yeah, we'll see in six months' time whether it works or not, or whether we'll have to go down another route. beautiful day in London. It's admittedly cold, but super, super sunny. We kicked off the morning, went to gym. We've been on a bit of a health kick, going to the gym four times a week. 
Uh, this week we only did three times, but we are committed for a, a, probably about six months we didn't exercise at all. We thought that doing the house was exercise and that it's not true. It's, it's not the equivalent of actually working out. So we are now trying to fit that in with our lives as well. Anyway, that's a minor side point. We're now smashing out a second coffee of the morning and we're going to get back to renovation. Now we didn't film too much yesterday. We honestly, I think just got our heads down, wanted to do as much as possible, but Tom and his dad wrapped up the evening by shooting the walls. That was at about five o'clock in the evening. And then after that, we just called it a day so that we'd have a little bit of energy to get through it today. So plans for today. But first I've got to go put on the filthy clothes from yesterday as to not ruin any more of my wardrobe. This all needs to be stripped. Now I'm not entirely sure whether this bit here is paint or wallpaper. It seems a lot like paint. Oops, front door just slammed. Whereas this, this needs to come off. Tom and I were just talking about the wallpaper and saying, thank God we did the majority of the house when we first got it as like one of the first jobs of the renovation because we were just so chipper and had so much motivation back then. I feel like if we tackled a task that big now, I don't know how long we'd last. I think this would actually be one of the few things we hired someone for. I think getting rid of wallpaper in general isn't so bad. Like the dining room and the lounge were an absolute breeze. They were really easy. Any room that had kind of one or two layers was fine, but the hallway and most of upstairs had actually had five plus layers over the years. And so, the first couple of layers were easy and then I don't know what glue they used back when they were making Victorian houses but my god it is very effective so uh yeah that was a bit of a painful process luckily we've only got this one tiny bit to do now I'm gonna be here for a while so I'll just check in once this is done Stress levels are definitely high. It is one day before the plaster comes. It is half past six in the evening. We are only just starting. We both just finished work. Tom just got home from being actually in the office today. And um, this is where we are. So we have a lot to do. We've got all of this to clear, which admittedly, I don't actually think it's gonna take that long. But the issue is that every room is now being used or it's almost renovated. So we're not gonna put building equipment and dirty stuff in there. And there's a lot of wood, so we can't really store a lot of the wood outside. It's not so much doing the cleaning that's gonna to be tough, it's working out where the hell all of this cleaning is going to go, but that'll be fine. Then we've gotta clean the entire room, get it all ready, and then we've also gotta knock out the chimney for where we'll be putting a chimney into the one chimney breast in the house that didn't have a chimney, which of course, is the one chimney breast in the house where we want a chimney. We love not making stuff easy for ourselves. So that is the plan tonight. Got a lot to do. We are stressed, but we're gonna get cracking. How confident are you we're gonna get this done? I'm confident because I have you on my side. Aww. You love cleaning. I do love cleaning. But I'm confident we're gonna get it done like that, absolutely. We, we have no option. <laughs> we, yeah, we have no option, so. <laughs> right, let's go. So this room is basically clear. There's just some stuff for the plasterer over there that he's gonna be needing. This table that doesn't fit through any of our doors or up our stairs, so we're kind of stuck with it now. Um, and then all of the plasterer's stuff over there. All of the wood is gone. And this is our lounge, which I've not seen for months. Uh, the, that radiator is extremely heavy, so we're not gonna move it anywhere. And the cement mixer we're keeping down here because the plasterer might even want it to make his sand and cement mix. Yeah, this is the cleanest that this room has been in a very long time. And the fact that junk isn't gonna come fill it up again feels really, really good. We've now got 
One more job that we need to do, which is gonna be a little bit more complicated than we first thought. And this is the challenge. So, we were kind of just gonna knock it through and then we started looking at knocking through a fireplace and obviously we need to consider the load and whether or not it needs a lintel. So, we thought we were gonna make a tiny little hole there and then we'd patch it up, the plaster would make it look really good inside and we'd be golden, but think there's gonna be a lot more to this. We're just basically gonna draw around the outside of where this is so we know, in an ideal world, we would only smash behind that and find the lintel, uh, but we'll see. It's a couple of days later. We very quickly realized we were using a hammer and chisel at 10 p.m. at night uh, whilst being in a terraced house. So to avoid literally making our neighbors want to murder us, we asked the plasterer to come in and not start on that wall. As you can see, he has been. But before he can do the whole room, we do need to get this chimney sorted. So he's just left for the day. It's half past four and we are gonna get this done so that when he comes tomorrow, he can get cracking. So Tom did have a go at this this morning and you can see just over there, there is a lintel, which is good news. Um, so we're just gonna kind of knock the bricks out. You can also see that he has drawn the shape of the hole. So we're basically just gonna try and knock those bricks out. Now, obviously the lintel is up there and then there are one, two, three, four. There will be four layers of bricks underneath. So they might potentially fall. We'll see as we start banging away, but at least with the lintel, all of the above is uh, structurally sound. And that is what we were really worried about. So we can see that that is old brick. This is new brick. And over here, you can see that up to there is old brick and then there is new brick. Now that's actually not great news for us because the old brick is in terrible condition and really easy to smash. The new brick is actually very strong and that's the stuff that we wanna get rid of. Yeah, we've got the hole that we wanted. Tom, could you just pop the that in front? Is it the right size? As you can see, we just need to knock a little bit more out of the side just over there, but the beginning of a fireplace takes shape. So we're going to have the fireplace here, and then what we're going to have above the fireplace is our TV over here. But I don't want TV wires, I don't want to see anything there, so I'm thinking about creating a hole over here so that your TV wires would go in the chimney and then creating another hole that comes in here so that your wires would come out and then plug in here. And then over here, you would either have a built-in little cabinet or you would have something in front of it so you don't really see it. Now, as I said, I've seen it done in flats. I've seen it done in America, but I've not seen it done here or in a Victorian or somebody doing it themselves. So it might be done, but I really want it. I don't want to see wires. So we've got this bad boy. And this is going to drill a perfectly circle hole through the bricks down there. You can get your arm in to grab all the wires if they get stuck. Yeah, perfect size. Ignore the noise of the washing machine, the lighting's a lot better in here. I just realized I've kind of switched to us chopping in complete darkness. I don't know if you can tell, but we've actually plastered over where the lamps or lighting was in the lounge and dining room because it was completely off center. We want our, this is so loud. We want our living room light to be hung perfectly over the dining room table and we don't yet know where that's gonna go. And we want the light in the lounge to hang perfectly in the middle of the bay window and it wasn't. So we've been a little bit fussy, but we have actually plastered with the wires in there. So all we have to do is make a hole, reach in, grab the wires and we can reconnect. So we thought ahead there. Watching you do this, Tom is uh, reminding me of when we first put up plasterboard and we didn't know that that tool existed and we hand mixed tubs and tubs and tubs. We've come a long way. <laughs> okay, so we've now just chopped out two sides and one back and we're just gonna dot and dab the plasterboard into here and then JJ, our plasterer, can just plaster up all of that, plaster the perfect corners and then we'll paint it black inside, shove some wood in or something, I'm not entirely sure. But I think it'll look pretty cute.
So there we go. That is all done. The plasterer can come and finish that up. Let me give you a quick preview of what I'm thinking it's going to look like. Okay, bear with me because the lighting's making it look very um, eerie right now. But the plan is to sand all of this down and then paint it in nice neutral white that will match the skirting boards. This black iron uh, grating we're going to obviously be cleaning and then spray painting black again. And then we will be creating a base over here. I think we're gonna get some cool tiles. In here will be plastered and painted black as well, so it just naturally looks like a fireplace. And then, I don't know if you can even see, but here we've got the old iron bits. I think it's the grate for the fireplace, whatever that is. We're gonna be spray painting that black as well, and then placing it just in front here, so it looks relatively like a real fireplace. Again, the dark colors and dust and lighting is making it look pretty horrendous right now, but. I have a vision. It is the next morning and I can officially say we are prepared for the plasterer. He has already come, he's done a couple of days work and now that the fireplace is ready there is literally nothing that cannot be tackled by him. He's here for just over two weeks so we've got the lounge, the dining room, the hallway, the cupboard under the stairs, the coat cupboard, lots and lots to be plastered but what that means is by the time he's done lots and lots will be ready to paint and decorate which i'm super excited about with the plasterer in it does mean that tom and i have a couple of weeks just to dial it back a little bit i will admit the last few days has been very very intense so i'm very looking forward to being able to sleep a bit more see some friends enjoy ourselves but the work never truly stops we're going to spend the next couple of weeks mood boarding getting samples thinking about what we want our lounge and dining room to look like our back doors are arriving in a couple of weeks so we're installing the lintel in the kitchen we're going to be leveling the kitchen floor as part of leveling the floor we will not have a kitchen for a week so i'll also be seeing what we can whip up with only an air fryer and a chopping board and i'll be sure to take you along on that journey Basically, there's tons and tons and tons to do in the background, as there always is, but I'm very excited to take you along. So if you would like to watch the next steps, please hit the subscribe button. We put out new videos every single Wednesday. And if you've enjoyed watching us struggle through to get ready for the plasterer, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps boost the channel. That is it. Thank you as always for watching. I'm going to spend the next three days sleeping nonstop, but I will catch you next Wednesday. Goodbye. <laughs>